Well, I'm so grateful that you're all here tonight. My name is Bob Butler, and welcome to Renew. Woohoo! We're back, and life is good, and uh, grateful that you're here this evening uh, with us. We're going to uh, have a little bit of fun. Uh, the name of that song that about five of you watched the video for is called Walk the Line. Uh, from Johnny Cash, that'll be our theme song for the next five weeks, because some of you need to learn to walk the line. Um, just saying that we all have a problem with boundaries, and uh, I'm going to be up front and let you know uh, some of the off-color uh, off comments are mine alone, uh, but uh, I stole everything from this book called The Boundary Book. Uh, I've given this book out to, I don't know, a hundred people. Uh, I was telling somebody just a few minutes ago that I actually gave this out to a bride because she was having a problem just setting boundaries at a wedding. This should go in the book, by the way, all right? Uh, and I gave her this, and of course, uh, after the wedding, she sent it back to me with not a page moved. And she was a bridezilla. So I'm just saying, somebody needed boundaries. And... Uh, for those of you with children, and you think it's only for those of us who are conflict avoidant that need boundaries, let me tell you, some of you need boundaries for your kids, and of course, we're gonna go through basically this together over the next five weeks, and if you want the deeper stuff, well, you can read the book, all right? So we're gonna have some fun walking through boundaries uh, together. So uh, probably the biggest question is, you know, what is, a boundary because a lot of people don't understand this concept. I have uh, talked to people over and over and over again and they go, no, I get it, I get it, I just don't want to do it. Well, then it's not a boundary. Because <laughs> if you know the truth and you won't place the truth, guess what, you're living the lie, right? Let's just be honest. And so there's a problem. And boundaries are actually there for us for a number of reasons. And I, I like this as a definition a boundary is an appropriate limit defined by an individual, not by <coughs> others. What do you think about that? It's a limit you set. You want to talk about real freedom? Freedom comes when you set the game up. You get to set the rules. And in your life, believe it or not, I know your parents probably didn't agree with this, but you actually get to set the rules. The rules you live by, the things you want to have enforced in your life, you're a part to. Some of you will say, no, 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 they, they did this to me. No, they didn't. You didn't set the boundary. If you're an adult, and it looks like we're all adults in the room, you get to set your boundaries. All right? So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, let's talk a little bit about why it's so hard to set a boundary. All right? Um, it's tough to set a boundary. These are the things that I hear, or maybe you hear in your head. Can I set a limit and be a loving person? See, some people think you, you can't set a limit and still be considered loving and kind. I know there's no one in the room. Others will ask, well, what's a legitimate boundary? Guess what? If someone does something and you don't like it, that's a place you can set a boundary. That's it. That's a legitimate boundary. Whatever you want to call it, wherever you want to place it, whatever line you want it, whether it's, hey, I want you to be 15 feet away from me every time you talk to me, or I'm okay with you invading all my space and being right up here. Okay? That's a legitimate boundary. Here's another one that plays in some people's heads. What if someone's upset with or hurt by my boundary? Anybody want to admit? Nah. Two. The rest of you are lying. All right. Um, how do I answer someone who wants my time, love, and energy or money? See, these, these are areas where you get to set the boundary. Some people are really good with it, and other people are good with part of it. Maybe I'm good with my time, but not my love. Or maybe I'm good with my energy, but not my money. Or maybe I'm just, well, I just say yes to everything. That way everybody's happy. You have no boundaries. I just say no to everything. Guess what? You still don't have boundaries. You have a limit. 
Why do I feel guilty about or setting a limit? Anybody ever do that? Why do I feel guilty about this? How about this one? This one plays in. Should there be boundaries in relationships? This, <laughs> sometimes we get into these weird patterns. Now, I don't know that this is anybody in the room, but I'm just saying, right? Your relationship starts and they are perfect. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Rose-colored glasses, they can't do anything wrong. Isn't that passing wind so cute? Isn't that burp just amazing? Oh, I just love them. Hmm. Is that appropriate in the long haul? Have you said boundary? Have you said something? <laughs> oh, what went on there? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Give it up, give it up, give it up. No, no, no. It's totally appropriate to do all the time forever. Okay. <laughs> on purpose, okay. Um, how about this one? Why do I feel or are made to feel selfish when I set a boundary? I mean, the... Parents with kids, <laughs> friends who make you feel guilty because you're not doing what they want you to do at the time you want to do it. Does it sound familiar to anybody? Yeah, right? All the time. I, th I think it's really hard for people to set boundaries. And sometimes it gets noticed. So I'm going to play something um, that I am playing because I want you to look not at the scope of this, but just at the weirdness of it, okay? And I'm not making a political statement because this was on national TV and when I typed in boundaries, funny boundaries, this came up, okay? So this is not a political statement. I'm not saying anything, but I am saying we're talking about boundaries and I want you specifically to look at the person, the famous person touches. In the broadcast, we told you about the vice president getting criticized for this shoulder squeeze. Well, the incident has people talking about personal boundaries. The CBS 2's Weijia Jang reports the topic seems to pop up in life and on screen. He's nice, bit of a close talker. A what? You'll see. This is Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Aaron. So how long are you folks in town? That conversation on Seinfeld, two decades old, is still going on today. Am I talking too close to you? Oh, yes. How much personal space do you need? Um, I say elbow room. Elbow room? Yeah. What does that mean? If you too close to, too close touch my elbow, you're too close. That's not enough room for others. Show me where your personal space is. Right, right here, right here. Anybody that get, oh, this could be a little, this is close enough. But closer than, that's too close. That's too close. It, okay. it, that makes you very uncomfortable, even if it's another woman. And what about touching someone like Vice President Joe Biden here, prompting the social media hashtag creepyVP. But this is somebody who is just a stranger or a mere acquaintance, unless you know that level of comfort on their end, is fine he look like Steve touching, Martin? I'd stay away from it. Etiquette expert Mr. Manner suggests three basic rules for respecting body boundaries. Stay at least three feet away from someone. Certain body parts, head and shoulders are off limits. And if you tap someone on the arm, don't hold the touch for too long. Oh, definitely don't try this. If I had bent over and gave you a kiss. Oh, too close, too close. <laughs> he wasn't the only one who thinks touchy-feely is the natural way. I think it's just human nature to, you know, hug people. It's a human. I can hug you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So hard. You're a stranger, but I don't feel anything. Yeah. But Mr. Manner says you might make someone else feel awkward. On the Upper West Side, we get James. Look at her face. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> It was just an instant, right? Yeah, I keep trying to study her face though, and I can't quite get she a good read. Did she react? Not really, but was, she was, was smiling at it. Was, it was quick. Yeah. Though. Anyway, yeah. Mr. Manners didn't know there was a Mr. Manners. He says you can also uh, practice defensive touching by extending your arm to establish personal space. The hand. Like the old, you know, stiff arm from football. <laughs> oh, there it is. So she's kind of got a little smirk. 
She doesn't look disgusted, but she looks a little irritated. Was she irritated with what her husband is saying or the vice president? I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, how many of us have had a boundary moment where you went, I shouldn't have done that? Right. Am I the only one who wants to admit this stuff? Like, it, and we all do it. I'm telling you, we all do it. You, I, I was a big hugger pre-COVID, and it was hard for me to not hug people. And then the whole thing came on, masks, you got to be 15 feet away. Then all of a sudden, they're like, okay, you can touch again. They're like, oh, COVID outbreak, don't touch anybody. Oh, my gosh. And you just start going crazy about this stuff, and you wonder, well, what is the right and, and I, I love a good line that I learned years ago, and it is, uh, can I hug you? The person has a right to say no. Right? They have a right to set their boundary. Some people have problems setting boundaries, and so they're just going to say yes and feel crappy about it. But you know what? You can judge that by a person's face. If you're truly trying to be connectional, and that's what we're about here at Renew. We're, the reason we're studying boundaries is because we want to renew relationships with everyone, renew relationships with one another and with God and kind of look at the whole worldview of this idea of how do we set boundaries and still honor ourselves as well as God in the middle of that. And so it's, it's really important for us to kind of figure out where your boundary is and uh, when is the appropriate time to talk about it. And we're going to do that over the course of these next six weeks by talking about these issues. So um, a person with healthy boundaries can say no to others when they want to, but they are also comfortable opening themselves up to intimacy and close relationships. Remember when I said you can't just say no to everything? You can't. Because if you do, you're shutting yourself off to life. You're shutting yourself off to other human beings. You, there are places where you can say yes and no, and you have the ability to set those boundaries for you, whatever's comfortable for you. I'm just continuing to say this because I want you to understand that for most people, there is a mixed set of boundaries. You have different boundaries for different people. For someone could have a healthy boundary at work, um, that could be a porous boundary in romantic relationships. That is. You have different types. There's a porous boundary. That is one where you kind of you, you let it go because you really like the person, you know them, and it's okay, and you can kind of manage through it. You're going to have a conversation about it. But there's other places where you need to have rigid boundaries. And so you need to have a little bit of both. So, so one size does not fit all, but you have to be careful where you're going to put these in place. right? If you're someone who doesn't have a lot of boundaries, you can't take and say, well, I'm going to have boundaries, I'm just not going to have any boundaries at all, because if you do, you're going to be the person who's always unhappy. And you're always going to be blaming other people. And you're never going to take ownership. You see, setting up a boundary and making a decision when it can be violated and when it can, or when you're kind of on the edge of how it will be set, is a part of taking ownership for your life. It's part of, I should have wore this shirt, adulting. It's time to adult. Right? And we've got to make those decisions. So uh, the appropriateness of a boundary depends upon heavily upon the setting. What is appropriate to say when you're out with friends may not be appropriate to say at work. Ain't that right, Frankie? Right. <laughs> <laughs> some cultures have different expectations when it comes to boundaries. For example, in some cultures, it's consideredly wildly inappropriate to express them express emotions in public. Anybody come from that culture? Yeah. And a lot of times they said, oh, I was born of a Dutch mother, so, you know, that's me, right? And you don't, weren't allowed to express emotions, you know? I can still remember the first time I hugged my dad coming home from college, it was kind of like, what was that? <laughs> like, you know, we didn't do that. That's not something you did. <laughs> my brother-in-law broke me. Um... In other cultures, emotional expression is encouraged, right? The Italian, I'm going to kiss you on the face, going to pinch your cheeks. So cute! Right? These are all part of that uh, the boundary setting. So, six common types of boundaries. A person who always keeps others at a distance, whether emotionally, physically, or otherwise, is said to have rigid boundaries. Alternatively, someone who gets too involved with others has porous boundaries. 
There are six common types of boundaries. Physical boundaries, which is personal space and physical touch. A healthy boundary includes awareness of what's appropriate and what's not in various settings and types of relationships. And right, this has changed over time, right? You used to be able to say anything you wanted at work. You can't do that anymore. HR will be on you for some of the things that are said, right? And, uh, Somebody I know was working in a factory all their life, and they, you know, factory guys just say whatever they want to say, right? And so the girl from the office walked by, and somebody said something, and she heard it. She walked into the office. HR person called them in. Did you say this? The guy said, yes. He said, you're fired. We don't tolerate that. Well, I didn't know. Yes, you did. We trained you. You didn't listen. Right? What could be said 20 years ago might not be able to be said today. That's important. Intellectual boundaries, that's another one, refers to thoughts and ideas. A healthy intellectual boundary includes the respect for others' ideas and awareness of an appropriate discussion. Okay, this, this is something we need to teach in America again. We just do. Like, we can't have discussions without fighting with one another. Right? How many people have disconnected from a Facebook account because of some, what somebody posts every day? Why can't we just have a discussion? I have a friend who loves taking the opposite side of whatever the thing is those people are passionate about just to create the confrontation. <laughs> Probably not appropriate. But he likes having the interplay. He's okay with it either way. He just wants to have fun with it. Another place, emotional boundaries, refers to a person's feelings. A healthy emotional boundary includes... A limitations on when to share and when not to share personal information. Right? We've all been taught when the person calls up on the phone and asks you for your social security number, do you give it to them? No. Mother's maiden name? No. Right? Okay, but maybe it's a friend who calls up and says, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You're having a whole conversation with them on the phone. And they say, what was your mom's maiden name again? What was your maiden name again? When, when is appropriate, when isn't it? These are boundaries we set. Sexual boundaries refer to emotional, intellectual, and physical aspects of sexuality. A person with a healthy sexual boundary has a mutual understanding and respect of limitations and desires with those they choose to be sexual with. A lot of people, uh, we live in a very sexualized society. I was having a conversation with somebody recently and we talked a lot about this and I think we need to have more conversations about what is appropriate and what is not appropriate because the TV keeps blurring the lines what's healthy and what's not and so and, and because we've got a whole generation of kids coming up I really want to make sure that we protect our children and so we've got to have these conversations what's appropriate and what's not because man the world will tell you oh, everything's okay and I'm here to tell you no it's not because the world doesn't have boundaries you get to say Material boundaries refers to money and possessions. <laughs> a healthy material boundary involves setting limits on what you will share and with whom. I remember a, a, a preacher friend of mine used to talk about he hated Money Sunday. If you're not familiar with churches, some churches do Money Sunday. And this is the Sunday where they gather everybody together and they ask what you're going to give for the rest of the next year. Like, and you've got to write it down. And he said he hated it because... And I said, why do you hate it? Because because we stand up there and tell people, we know what to do with your money better than you do. And I hate that. I'd rather tell them, this is the thing we're trying to do. Here's the mission we're on together. And share it with them. Instead of saying, give me your money, it feels like I'm asking, I'm pulling money out of them that they actually don't want to share because maybe they've got a boundary and something else that they want to give to. And who am I to tell them that we can do it better than they can? I love that. What? Time boundaries. <laughs> this is my worst one. Time boundaries refers to how a person uses their time. To have a healthy time boundary means we must set aside enough time for each facet of life. Work, play, family, health. Who's got a healthy time boundary? <laughs> Everybody went like this. Well, I don't know. <laughs> 
I often say I, I, I see balance in my life with a, with a time boundary as I'm passing it. Look, there it is. There you go. <laughs> as I overspend my time. A healthy boundary shows us what we're responsible for, what is not our responsibility or our property. The greatest boundary reminder comes from an unknown author who prayed. My friends in the room will understand this. God, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And prayer goes on and on from there, but really, that's a really great understanding of what a healthy boundary looks like, and yet many people say it, but don't understand it. They don't dive into it. <laughs> I've had so many conversations with people about this. And, and they often say to me, well, how do I know it's a good boundary? Well, you tell people to silence their cell phones. No, not just that. <laughs> I have a boundary. I have a boundary. It's got to be on. I got things to do, people to see. Okay. If you were as important as me, you'd have this boundary too, right? I am. I've had many conversations where a person who claims Jesus as, a, as their savior has a huge fear of setting boundaries because they're afraid they're going to offend somebody and that, that somehow will rub off on what they believe. I'm here to tell you, you know what, the healthiest thing you can do is set appropriate boundaries. And the appropriate boundaries are really simple, right? That, that saying right there is really good. God, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. What are the things you can't change? Anything outside your sphere, your little circle, your little thing. Um, so you can't control the world. You just can't do it. And every time you try, you're just going to set yourself up for a whole lot of pain and an unhealthy boundary. And you're going to wonder, why aren't they doing it the way I told them to do it? Because you're not in control of it. It's, it's, it's my nephew who's now 23 who looked at my father when he walked through the living room. You're not the boss of me, old man. <laughs> You can't even control a little kid. How do you think you can control another human being? Stop trying. You want to lead a happier life? Stop trying. Every time we've tried to control the masses, it's failed. You cannot legislate good behavior. You cannot legislate people believe in their beliefs. You cannot do it. You cannot set their boundaries for them. You have to be able and willing to talk to them, have a discussion, and then allow the boundaries to come up and let them set them. Boundaries have to be set by each of us individually. You can choose to let other people set your boundaries and you're going to be unhappy. So, uh, slide back. A Christian must always help anyone in need. How many of you have ever heard this? All right. <laughs> and the people who who say this often cite a piece of scripture from uh, Galatians 6 2. They say, carry each other's burdens and in this way fulfill the law of Christ. Now, this is a great coffee mug quote. Okay, it's great coffee mug theology. It's on the coffee mug. It looks good as you're lifting it, tastes good, but the reality is it's not truth. And if you need me to prove it to you, you can just uh, move down just a little bit further and you can go. And look at Galatians 6, 5, and it says, each one should carry their own load. So what are we to believe? I'm supposed to carry your load or I'm not supposed to carry your load? Your burden, my burden, whose burden is it? What am I supposed to do? Is it, am I going to be a good boy or a bad boy? What does it look like if I don't carry your stuff? Huh? I just want to know. You see where it causes confusion? So let me help you. So the original Greek for burden and load provide the answer to the question. The Greek word for burden means excessive burdens. The ones we could never carry or be expected to carry on our own. The Greek word translated load means daily toil. The word describes everyday cares and needs that need to be addressed. As a communal faith, we are expected to help the burdens that are too large for one person, but everybody's supposed to carry their own stuff. Isn't that an interesting thought, right? You can still be a really good person in the world and allow that person to carry their own stuff, go to their own job, 
tie their own shoes, drive their own car, expect them to pay for their stuff. You get to still do that. That's okay. But when somebody's got too much, like the world has crashed down on them for some reason, life has just overwhelmed them, it's way too much, guess what? That's where we're supposed to step in. That's the place. Like That's the helpful place. That's why around here we laugh about all the ways in which we're involved. And everybody goes, well, how'd you get involved in that? I go, I don't know. Somebody was in need and somebody said, hey, I want to do that. And we said, okay. Because somebody's got a need. So we jump in. That's not breaking anybody's boundaries. That's actually helping us create our own boundaries. Where am I going to set myself so that that person is responsible for themselves, has a good feeling about themselves, and yet I can still help those who are overwhelmed? I mean, really powerful stuff when you start to think about it. The point is this. A boundary helps us distinguish where responsibility is and someone else's begins. A boundary helps us distinguish where responsibility begins and someone else's begins after that. Where our responsibility is and where theirs begins is the most important part. Whether it's porous or rigid, I don't really care which way you want to go with it, but you have to make that decision for yourself. And it's been, I mean, it's really hard for someone who doesn't like conflict, like myself, I, and I'm going to continue to refer to me because it just, it's easier. There are times when I, I'm willing to just forget about my boundary because I see someone's in excessive need and I'm willing to say, you know what, forget my day. And I can tell you this, God always works it out. Always. Probably one of the... Um, uh, most interesting ones for me, and this is a personal history. So, um, my mom uh, uh, was uh, uh, dying, and um, uh, I was wondering about my own life and like what was going on. And I'd just gotten laid off, and I'm wondering oh, why did this happen to me? And I'm thinking about all this stuff, and I got a phone call. Hey, would you come down? Uh, to Florida and drive all my stuff back so I can medevac your mom back to Chicago. And, well, I should be looking for a job. I should do this. I should do that. Well, you know what happened? <laughs> On the way down, I talked to somebody uh, from another division in that same company. And by the time I came back to Chicago, they had doubled my pay and started my own company. You know, God says when you're willing to sometimes just let it go, he'll jump in. Just got to let it go. Right? You can tell who was here before. All right. I'm still trying to think of a hand motion for boundaries. So if you figure one out, bring it on up. All right? So uh, that being said, what was that? You got one? Like this? Or like this? So get away from me. I got a boundary. Okay. I, I can go with that. All right. We'll make it happen. Now, now, some of you are going, well, why do I really need a boundary? I, well, here, I'm just, again, if you're not a Christian in the room, it's fine. I'm just going to tell you where I come from and kind of where it's at for me. So here's an understanding. God has boundaries. Did you know that? God has boundaries. He limits himself through his presence. He limits himself, which means he has a boundary. He confronts sin, those acting selfishly or self-centered, and allows consequences. He limits himself. He guards his house against those ideas that rob him of loving others. His gates have boundaries which are meant to foster healthy relationships with all people. In the same way, we're made in his likeness, and therefore we have a personal responsibility to have a boundary. You have a personal responsibility to have a boundary. If you don't have them, if you're sitting in this room tonight because I don't have boundaries, guess what? God's looking at you going, it's time. It's time. I know some of this is tough for some people, but I'm just letting you know. Now, I want to go back to that prayer for a moment. What are the things you can change and have control over? Yourself. Anything else? Because some of you are trying to control a lot more than that. I know you. You're right. 
It's only yourself. When asked, I often refer to this yourself is the hula hoop around your waist. Everything on the inside of the hula hoop, you get control of. Everything on the outside, you don't. So what's in my control and where can I set my boundaries? Well, I can set my boundaries with my feelings. Some of you are really sensitive, just saying. But your feelings come from your heart and can tell the sta status of your relationships. The point is your feelings are your responsibility and you must own them and see your problems so that you can find the answer to whatever they're pointing to. Feelings point to something. Sometimes it's factual, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's an old tape, <laughs> sometimes it's not. Feelings are kind of like barometers. They're just telling you what's up. It might not necessarily be true, but you've got to figure that out. That, that's the inside piece. What's something else you don't, uh, that you are inside the um, hula hoop? Well, attitudes and beliefs. Attitudes are about your orientation towards something and the stance you want to take towards something. Beliefs are anything you accept as truth. Proverbs 13.8 uh, and 2.4 um, uh, say that uh, setting limits and accept responsibility will save lives. You have a responsibility to set your limits. Behaviors, they're inside. Behaviors have consequences, enough said. Choices, every choice comes with a bite, as the adage used to say. Every choice comes with a bite. Every choice comes with a consequence. But you get to make them. Sometimes we don't make good ones. But you said it, and you get to move with it. A common boundary issue is disowning our choices and trying to lay responsibility for them on someone else. Values, you have, a ch you have the opportunity to, to write your values, to say what you value. We value what we love and assign importance, importance to. Let me, let me repeat that. You value what you love and assign importance to. No one else does. You get to do that. See, you see where boundaries can be free? You now get to decide these things. Now, a lot of people are just too lazy. I, that, that's my personal belief. They just don't want to set their own boundaries. Because if they do, then they have to take responsibility for them. It's so much easier to blame someone else. It's just easier. I want to blame the government for that. I want to blame that guy for that. I want to blame that driver for that. I want to blame that person for that. And you name it, I want to blame somebody else. Because if I don't, then i got to look at me and whoo, I'm back in my hula hoop again. Dang it. And i got to tell you what I really want. What else do you do inside your hula hoop? Your limits. Setting limits on others is what we think of first when we talk about boundaries. However, we must also limit ourselves by setting internal limits. <laughs> I often say, don't give me a bag of Lay's potato chips. I cannot stop at one. <laughs> I have no boundary. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob. I'm an addicted to <laughs> It's true. My buddy Jim says I'm addicted to anything that uh, gives me the warm fuzzies. I mean, uh, really, it's limits, right? It's limits. What are you going to set your limits on? And how are you going to move forward with that? that uh, God will help you set those limits with the consequences. But some of the times, we don't see the consequences for what they really are. And they are evil. Because we allow ourselves to violate our own boundaries to the point where it just takes us down this path, right? Imagine. Well, it's not that hard to imagine. Me eating Lay's potato chips every day, all the time. How big would I get? Do I get to blame you or Lay's potato chips? Who can I sue for this? Because I want to sue somebody for this. I will never forget. I was in uh, college at Carbondale, and uh, this lady popped on uh, Kate Gerardo TV, and she's you know not looking all that healthy, and she's holding a, a thing of Jack Daniels, and she's, she's going, "I didn't know a fifth of Jack Daniels hurt my baby." I got no boundaries. Seriously, people. Responsibility, right? Resources and gifts, thoughts. No other creature is capable of our thinking ability. If you're a human in the room, you have the ability to make decisions. 
We are the only creatures called to love God with all we have, including our mind. We're instructed over and over and over again to capture our thoughts and make them obedient. We establish thinking boundaries by ourselves, by owning our thoughts, by growing our knowledge, by clarifying our distorted thinking. I tell you, I was growing up, I had all kinds of thoughts of how the world worked. And now it's 60 years later, and none of those worked out. <laughs> the world doesn't work according to... Right. What are the things I have control to set boundaries over my desires and love? Did you know that love is a muscle that needs a regular workout? It hurts to know that with... It hurts to know the joys. It needs a person to accept the truth about oneself and accept the ups and downs of love and God in one another. Everyone sets their own boundaries. However, accepting God's truth sets the bar at a right level. That's why, uh, truthfully, I'm a Christian. Because there's a bar. Morality is based around that bar. And so, for me, it just made it simpler. I'm a simple guy. Um, I prefer for things to be pretty clean and pretty clear. And so for me, that is just helpful so that I understand that I have the opportunity to set a bar and I know what it's at. A friend of mine asked me, well, you know, what about these Ten Commandments? And I said, you mean uh, 600 that the Jews added on to the Ten? Uh, well, what's the right line? And I said, you know what? The original Ten Commandments were actually guardrails. If you decide to jump over the guardrail and fall off the cliff, that's your problem. It wasn't God's decision. This is trying to help you, right? He's trying to give you a boundary that made sense. But yet, we all go, hey, what's over the edge? I'm just saying, some of us jumped over the edge. I wanted to see what's on the other side. Anyway, um, so now we get to have a little fun. We got a lot of people in the room today. Um, I'd like to do multiple groups, but we're going to try to stay together. We'll see how this rolls tonight. How's that? Is that okay? 15 minutes left. Let's see what we can do here. First question. What was new for you tonight as we spoke about boundaries? <coughs> Anyone? No, that's not working. Okay. The way God has boundaries for us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the way God has boundaries for us. Yep, Bob. I like the, that you uh, told the difference between burden and load of the two scriptures in Galatians and clarified that. The burden and load of each end. Yes. So, you know, I always thought boundaries are for other people. Boundaries are for other people. Yeah. Because you run the world. <laughs> His eyebrows went up. Uh, those on the camera can't see that. Awesome. Right. What did you mean when you said God has boundaries? Okay, God has boundaries. Uh, thank you for that question, um, Dan. So God has boundaries. So um, God limits himself on a regular basis. A boundary is a limit. It's, a, it's an area that stops things. And God has a limit to that. And a lot of times people don't like that because, A, the consequence of their action, they're like, why didn't you save me from that? He says, I don't have anything to do with it. You violated the boundary. You've got to pay the consequence. Now, you can turn to God and say, I'm sorry about jumping over the fence, over that guardrail. Will you come and help me? And he'll put you back on the road. But there still may be consequences. That He limited himself from stopping you from jumping the guardrail. And he also limits you from... Uh, not receiving the consequence for your actions. A lot of times people want that, right? Well, let, let me make all the right decisions, but when I make the wrong decisions, could you make it a right decision? I didn't study for the test. Will you help me have all the knowledge? Uh, no. That's that guy's job. But we do that in real life, don't we? All the time, right? We, we want somebody to stop it, and we don't want to recognize that maybe we were the problem. Maybe it was us who made that decision to jump over the guardrail or, or, well, you can think of a thousand things that you wish you didn't do. <laughs> and man, you didn't want to pay a consequence for it. But God limited himself. 
He also limits himself by giving all of us time to come to know him. Just so. Does that help, Dan? Is that good? Cool. Anything else? All right, question two. Why don't you set boundaries? Yes, Barb. I've asked to have a boundary and the people refuse me. Somebody I love or, or something like, a, like uh, I was living in my father's house as an adult, directly below the kitchen. And I had a, had a afternoon into late night job and would get home around 10, 11 and couldn't wind down until midnight. And when you get up in the morning, be stomping real loud above my head because he got up at 6 in the morning and I couldn't sleep. So I said, Daddy, can you please, could you please, you know, try and shuffle your feet or something in the morning? And he refused because it was his house. And you should get up, Dan. No. <laughs> Did you have control? I've with other people and I've said, you know, could you please? Okay, this but... This is bothering me. Could, could, we, could we have a, 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 a something, you know? Right. And they so, refuse. Right. And so then you have other choices to make, right? Yeah. By the noise-canceling headphones. Dang, I love that my son got me those. Um, <laughs> but then Diane scares the heck out of me walking into the room. I'm like, ah! <laughs> but... So, I don't mean to make light of it. So, Barb, uh, I think sometimes we can set boundaries with others, and if they choose not to fulfill them, then we have to either come up with another solution or exit from that relationship. And, and, and those are the choices. You have to be ready to do. I've got a question. Uh, yep. Thinking, so, some of these sound to me like expectations. Do you have a control? Do you have control if they're going to punch you in the face? No. All right. I can't control it. Right. So you, can, so you can just not be around people who punch other people in the face. Right? I expect people to hit a certain way or not to do something. Right. Well, well, boundary is a personal issue where I make a decision that you're not, uh, this is this is unacceptable to me. It's unacceptable for you to punch me in the face. Right. right? So if you go to try and I don't duck, then who's at fault? Me. I pay the consequence, right? But if I made that clear to you that I said, hey, I don't want you punching me in the face and you go to do it, I have a choice to either duck, get out of the way, or cancel our friendship or call the police. Okay. Right? So it gives me the choice of the freedom to live the life I want versus an expectation that you will behave the way I think you should. Right, that'd be good. Probably. Ah. That's how I do. Yeah, that's true. Yep. And my, you know, my boundaries don't cross these lines in my lane. My expectation is that you will stay in your lane. That's the rule over in my lane. But I can't control what you do. Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great point. Um, what's your name? Christina. Christina. Okay, so an expectation is an assumption about someone else's behavior. And then a boundary is a communication or a request. 
a boundary is a communicated request. Communication or request? A, a, a request. Okay, a request. Yeah, I like that. Richard. Mm -hmm. well, you You're, can influence somebody else's behavior by what you say or how you act. And sometimes people will misinterpret the kind of guy you Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we are human creatures, right, that get, some people are intuitive. Like, they can see somebody's body language and pick it up. Some people can see something in their eyes and catch it, right? Other people can't. And so you can communicate it directly, and they might not still get it. And so at some point, it may elevate a level or two, and sometimes, you know, it's the REO Speedwagon song. you got to say it to them in their own language, whether they can hear it, right? Kevin, does that help? Yeah. yeah. I think a boundary is really a limit for yourself. Where am I going to draw the line? And understand where are my lines. And making the conscious decision to set a line. And that way when somebody is going over that line, you can make the decision to say, hey, this person is violating my boundaries. Let me, let me figure out what to do with this situation. That's great. Good job. I think people don't set boundaries because they make any responsibility. Ah, uh, did you hear that? People don't set boundaries because then they have to have responsibility. Give some examples. You want to try an example, Jim? My boundary was I was only going to have one piece of cake. Jim was only going to have one piece of cake tonight. That was his boundary. And it didn't happen. And it didn't happen, so you violated that. Yeah. And you're going to pay the consequence. How was it? <laughs> I have to say it was awesome. So, and it's <laughs> all explanatory if I get <laughs> It's always better when you have two. Yeah. I was thinking, I, I haven't thought about boundaries. Okay. I think that maybe as uh, an age, we have we, we experience a lot of different having to develop some boundaries for our kids and, and ourselves, but I haven't really broken it down the way it's being presented to me. So it's, it's, it's very good to be able to try to identify how to, how am I exercising my boundaries for kids. Well, it's, I, I mean, I'm with you, Brian. I think uh, many people go throughout life and don't recognize that they have the freedom to set a boundary. Because they either were told as a child, or they were lambasted for setting it up. You know, they're, that you know that's one right there where your parents ignore your boundaries, right? So then, then you think, oh well, authority figures get to do this because they're that. Well, no, they don't. It's just that one did, and so then you got to make other decisions. And I think sometimes we grow up in these environments that don't allow us to actually set boundaries. And so we don't actually even recognize they're there. And, and some people go out throughout their life and never do a self-analysis of why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? You know, the beauty is that in a room like this, trying to renew your life, you get the opportunity to see that God has created ways in which we do have control over our lives. And you don't get to say, and throw it out the bathwater just because you're lazy. No, you're making those decisions. You know, you, you make a decision where you say yes, no, or maybe. You still made a decision. I don't care what happened, but you did, You made the decision. And you had the right to make it final. Okay? There was somebody else. Hold on one second. There was somebody else. Who, yeah, yeah. I think sometimes, uh, like, at work, you know, like I'll say, like, there's a language barrier and stuff, and sometimes I'll just go, like, no touch. So they don't take it seriously, you know, because they'll actually touch you after it. So it's like, you don't really establish that boundary anymore because they don't take it seriously anyway. Or, you know, it's nothing like that big a deal, but it's like, they don't respect it anyway, so you just kind of give up. And just go. Well, but if something matters to you, I will say this, and I want everyone to hear this. If something matters to you, you keep enforcing the boundary. You're making a decision to let the boundary go. Always remember that. No matter if they keep violating or not, you're making the decision to allow it to happen. Well, it's 
It's called being lazy. <laughs> it might be easier, but it's lazy. And in the end, what? Absolutely. You have to be ready when you set your boundary. kind of what Bruce is saying. It's, it, it's not worth it. If they're just going to keep doing it anyway. I'm just going to allow it to happen. And oh well, does it really matter to me? You know what? If it does, you will. If it's valuable to you, you'll, you'll, you'll take ownership. Right? Uh, Kiyoshi. saying, you know, I've adjusted myself. I made fun of it, but didn't mean to, but, but the reality is, it is one of those things, if it's truly important to you, set your boundary and hold to it. And so, damn the torpedoes, what the other person thinks, how they feel about it, if it's truly important to you, you need to set your boundaries. If you don't, you're at fault. And now I'm saying that, and, and anybody in the room who's been abused, I'm, I want you to understand that was not your fault. You were not responsible. You did not do anything. I'm telling you right now that was not your deal. But I am saying in regular life where there isn't a power structure and somebody is, is not abusing, you have to think you have some responsibility. Okay? That, I just want to be clear on that because I love everyone in the room. And, and you have to know that. right? Say one out of four people have been abused or through tra some trauma trauma. So... Be careful. Pam, and then we'll go to the end for the final comment. A scenario. Yep. Okay. Uh, so someone comes home from work, they've got a really bad day, and they're lost. And their spouse walks in and says, I got a So who sells this shit? You know, because probably along with guilt, and then I feel that. Because, you know, and because someone can guilt me. And, but, So again, boundaries, right? A practical thing um, is, okay, so for those who may or may not heard it, come in, somebody else wants to just unload their whole life to you, you're tired, you're already dealing with everything. It's a consistent thing that's happening, okay? That's not the time that you declare your boundary. <laughs> right? The time you declare your boundary is when everybody's well rested, and you say, I need to talk to you about something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's find a strategy that works. And then if it gets violated, go, wait a minute, we, we set up an appointment to talk about that. And then please get back to it. That's good boundary setting. Final word. Okay, so I have four very concise boundaries that have been violated on the way Do not render medical damages to me or find me up in the lowest year. The other one is do not cause financial damages to me to where I can't pay my monthly 
Right, that's a rigid boundary. Great example of a rigid boundary or a set of boundaries that you set yourself up for. So I appreciate all of you. I want you to know that. This has been wonderful. Next week we'll come together and talk a little bit more about boundaries and this idea of a principle called you reap what you sow. All right? So uh, thanks for being here. Thank you, Janice, for dinner and for all those who provided. Grand, awesome. Thank you all for that stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, if we have any leftovers, please take them home. Uh, I don't want cake uh, for breakfast. Ha, ha, ha.